what a play from Jake Oliver. And that is destroyed! That's him playing on the third base line. Peter makes the great play from Peter McNeil. WA field here in beautiful Edmonds, Washington. We got the second matchup, second series going on of the 2024 season going on tonight. We have the Atlantic Aces taking on the Northern Nighthawks here tonight. The defending champion Northern Nighthawks, your 2023 World Series champions. We're going to get a first look at them in the 2024 season here tonight good evening everybody i'm your host here tonight mark campanero chase winkler will be with me on color here shortly running a little bit late tonight but we're gonna get this game underway and i'm sure he'll be here very shortly so 
Good to be with everybody again here tonight. We're incredibly excited for this next matchup. And just like every year, you know, when you when we, when this when the season starts off, it's just so exciting to see everybody back again and playing here in the AWA. We're so excited to be back and this has been our first week, second matchup that you'll see this week, so looking forward to getting into it. We're going to look at our weather here for tonight. So we'll be getting into the weather forecast, a nice little uh, new feature that we have this season. So we'll get right into Good that. Good evening, football fans. This is Joe Acor from the AWA Weather Center. Looking at the forecast tonight, it looks like an absolutely beautiful evening with some clouds overspreading from the Pacific Ocean from the west. Temperature should be in the mid to low 50s, and the wind should be down less than about 10 miles per hour. Everybody have a great night. Remember dingers or nothing dingers or nothing and that was your weather update from none other than joe accord joe we appreciate you doing the weather updates for us and a cool feature that we have this season and as you can see chase winkler he just got here we're gonna plug him in quickly here and he'll be with me the rest of the way tonight but before we get into everything we're gonna get into our starting lineups for the atlantic aces and the northern nighthawks Jack Layhouse, University of Washington. Drew Gradwall, Blue Mountain State University. Go Goats. Philip Restenbacher, Meadowdale High School. Chance Justice, ITT Tech. Reed Whitson, Gonzaga University. Jack Baines, Certified Dog. And that's your Northern Nighthawks lineup here tonight. The Nighthawks won't have everybody here tonight. Reed Whitson is out with an injury. Jack Baines will not be here tonight, unfortunately. But there will be some familiar faces on this returning Northern Nighthawks team here tonight. Chance Justice, Drew Gradwall, Jack Blayhouse, and Philip Grossenbach are all here. That was your four in the World Series, the lineup last, last World Series. So pretty cool here tonight. We're going to get into the Atlantic Aces lineup right now. Aaron Schofield, Washington State University. Moses Valadez, go away. Morgan Granich, Northwest Guatemalan High School. Dylan Carroll, Little Man, Big Dreams. Jack Scholl, Maplewood Elementary. Kanoa Jandoff, University of Washington. And that is your Atlantic Aces lineup here tonight. So we have we've gone through all the lineups. We're about to get game number one started, but before we do so, we're going to send it down to Robert, who's got Chance Justice of the Northern Nighthawks. All right, Chance, coming off an injury this offseason and a, well, surgery for Tommy John, what, what is, how does that affect you so far to begin the season? What do you expect in terms of how you deal with the injury and the surgery? Um, it's going to be interesting. I'll be able to tell after my first AB. Um, obviously, I can't throw yet. My surgeon hasn't cleared me, so I'm going to be playing first and underhanding the ball. Um, so that's, that's pretty much what I'm thinking right now. So it all depends after my first swings and see how it feels. Underhand, is that new for you in terms of wiffle ball? Uh, no, I had to do it last year because I heard it in the middle of the season, uh, coaching some high school kids. So, um, no, it's not new to me. I think I got a pretty, pretty good down. Uh, I think I could get at least 70 miles an hour underhand. We'll see. Uh, World Series defending champs, uh, what is the goal? I mean, same thing, but um, what might change for you so far early on but throughout the stretch of the season? Um, I think because it's the same team as last year, I think we're going to be able to hit the ground running and be more consistent instead of the middle of the pack this year. Um, we got Drew Gravel back, who's a key pitcher in our uh, league, one of the top pitchers in the league, great hitter too. Philip Grossenbacher's coming back, and he had a huge playoff run. Jack Blayhouse was consistent in the playoffs. Um, I'm very excited. It's a team that's coming back. Uh, all Everybody's coming back from last year, so I think we'll uh, get deep in the playoffs again. Awesome. All right, back up to the booth. Thanks, Chance. Thank you. All right, good luck, man. Thanks, Thanks Robert. Just heard from Chance Justice there of the Northern Nighthawks. And as we mentioned earlier, the Northern Nighthawks, this is their World Series lineup from last season. Chance Justice, Jack Blayhouse, Drew Gradwall, and Philip Grossenbacher looking to defend that World Series title here in the 2024 season. So going to be an exciting matchup between these two teams here tonight. The Atlantic Aces only have three players as of right now Aaron Schofield Moses Valadez and Kanoa Jandok will be your lineup here tonight for the aces we may have some players showing up later but as of right now 
just three men for the Aces tonight. You'll notice that they will have somebody playing first base as well. His name is Emerson Crowell, 14U Wave player currently. Moses Valdez and Aaron Schofield are coaches of the Wave, and so lucky to ha enough to have Emerson Crowell out here for an inning playing first for the Aces while they only have three men. So it's very awesome excited to, to have him out awesome here. Awesome to see him out here. Absolutely. Chance Justice is going to lead it off for us here in game number one. About to get first pitch underway. First pitch here from Moses Valadez is a strike. Gets Justice to go around there. 0 and 1 to Chance Justice. Make that 0 and 2 now. Moises got after that incredible start last year. And hits the zone. Strike three. A quick three pitch strikeout. Sits down Chance Justice for out number one. Here in the top of the first. Yeah, Moises, he had a great start to the year last year. He's looking like an early MVP favorite through those first two series, carrying the Aces to, I think, a 6-0 start. And then I remember their third series, I think we were playing them, and during that first inning just tweaked his back or something, and that was kind of it for the rest of the season. So it's really good to see him back out here again, pitching really well. Yeah, and that that was that was a really disheartening injury for this Aces squad. As we all as we know, Moses Valadez, the ace for this Aces team, and their best best pitcher on the team. So whenever your best pitcher goes down, it's a difficult thing for any team. Is that's fouled off there by Jack Blayhouse. Count now runs to a ball and two strikes. But yeah, it's a difficult situation whenever your best pitcher goes down, and that's what happened with Moses Valadez. He tweaked his back, and he just didn't seem like he was the same player after he went down last season. So it's definitely excited for this, exciting for this Aces squad to have Valid as back. And he looks 100% healthy right now, as you can see from that first matchup he had against Chance Justice. That's just too far inside there to Jack Blayhouse. Full count now. Ground ball over to Aaron Schofield that third. He couldn't field it cleanly, and Jack Blayhouse will reach on an error. Aaron Schofield, one of the better fielders in the AWA, doesn't make too many errors out there. So you know that that had to have had a lot of spin on it when it was heading over his way for Aaron not to get that. Yeah, and Jack's also busting, it, busting down the line there pretty quick, making Aaron have to make a one-handed bare, barehanded play over there and just Aaron being one of the better athletes in this league can't couldn't even make that play. So yeah, tough play. And one, one thing maybe not a lot of people knew about Jack Blayhouse is that's popped up into the air into no man's land and Valadez tried to tag out Blayhouse there at second and Blayhouse noticed nobody's at third and that gets on by and Jack Blayhouse comes all the way around to score so Valadez unfortunate <laughs> run there the aces give up yeah that was uh, some interesting play after play right there and a little circus ball and ends up with a run for the Nighthawks. Just a weird situation as that ball landed in no man's land. Out over there down the first base side. Should have just been a single. Valadez tried to tag out Blayhouse over at second, over through second, and then they overthrew third. So Blayhouse came all the way around to score. And Drew Gradwall now ends up on second base with all the overthrows. Popped up into the air, Valadez underneath it and makes the grab for out number two, but Drew Gradwall didn't realize how many outs there were and he ran all the way to third. So Valadez looks back, throws on over to second and they get the double play. So one run does score for the Nighthawks here in the top of the first, but a unfortunate double play ends the inning for the Nighthawks. Nighthawks, they lead at one nothing. We go to the bottom of the first. Yeah, I mean, that's not worth it. 
Terrence Schofield is going to lead it off here for us in the bottom of the first inning. First pitch there from Drew Gradwall is, a high, is high for ball one. Drew Gradwall, rookie of the year last season in 2023. And he received quite a few awards last year at the awards ceremony. And it was funny because I talked to Drew Gradwall at the beginning of last season as that's popped up into the foul territory. Gradwall can't get there in time. Count now moves to three and one. But yeah, I was talking to Drew Gradwell at the beginning of last season and he, he looked at me and he goes, Mark, I'd be lucky to hit 300. I'd be lucky to go one for three every game. And what does he do? He's lead, He was one of the leaders in the league last year in home runs, one of the best pitchers in the league, wins rookie of the year, wins the World Series, and then just on and on and on and on. And it's just incredible what Drew Gradwell did this last season. And so him and I joke all the time. I'm like, you completely undersold yourself last year. Yeah, most definitely. Like you said, uh, he was saying he only wanted to go one for three last year. He was known for his pitching really early on, won the sign on, like you said. But something that really caught my eyes, if I'm not mistaken, he finished maybe top or even second most home runs on the Nighthawks. Yep. And really came alive in that postseason, like you said. And then ended up with about six or seven home runs. Was actually in the home run derby. And so just for him being known as a pitching, for that bat to come along was absolutely huge for this Nighthawks team last year. Absolutely. And, and you know, the thing is, too, is that th there were stretches last year that the Nighthawks, as a team, they just weren't really gelling together. And they had their struggles in the regular season. But one thing about Drew Gradwell is he actually really carried them for a portion of the season last year. And so it, it wasn't just that he was one of the better players on the team, but he really – was a big part of why they were so good last year and why they were able to even reach the World Series because this team was not expected to get there and they were having their struggles in the regular season last year. But Drew Gradwall was just really that shining light for them in those tough moments. And we saw it, how many awards he won last year. I mean, well-deserving by Drew Gradwall. And I know that team captain Jack Blayhouse is just thrilled to have him on the team. Yeah, you know, he just brings that camaraderie kind of, just keeps that team together, keeps everyone really cl close, keeps everyone kind of laughing and smiling, you know. Like I said, didn't really have a great regular season, but a strikeout right there from Kanoa. But, uh, yeah, like you said, got in those playoffs, kept the vibes going. We're, I think, a four or five seed and just rode that wave kind of like the Stingers did, but in a different way this year before. And, yeah, it was definitely – I think he also won World Series MVP, if I'm not mistaken. He did, yeah. So, yeah, took home about three or four awards and very de deservingly so. And he's got his first strikeout of the year right there. And, yeah, you know, I, 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 I don't anticipate us seeing a, a sophomore slump this year from Drew Gradwell. I mean, with all those awards that he won last year, I just think that's going to really unlock him and allow him to get even better in his sophomore season here in the AWA. Aaron Schofield goes around with a big cut there, 0-1, oh and, one, and, and that's, that's one of the reasons why Aaron Schofield's one of my favorite players in this league. Just comes up there, and he's hacking. Big, big hacks. I was going to say I – I really like this Aces team, their second year in the league. I think they're really going to grow here and be even better than what they were last year. And excited to see how it goes, bringing back, I think, a lot of their starters. So potential is definitely there. That's ripped out to center field. It's got a chance, and it hits the top of the tree above the yellow line. A three-run shot for Aaron Schofield in the Aces. They take the lead here, three to one in the bottom of the first. Aaron Schofield, a shot out to center. Very nice way to get his first hit and first home run out of the way at the same at bat. Great job from Schofield there to get his team back on top. Three to one here in the bottom of the first. One out. Crown him the Dinger King helmet. There we go. I love that thing. Great job to Aaron Schofield. And I know Moses Valdez has got to be feeling good. A nice two-run lead here in the bottom of the first. It's always nice as a pitcher to pitch at the lead. Yeah, most definitely. First pitch to Valadez is outside for a ball, 1 0. And that's fouled off. 1 and 1 now here to Valadez. Nobody on, one out in the inning. Aces lead at 3 to 1. Hits the zone, and that was a nasty one from Drew Gradwall. 
little screwball action right there. He gets Valadez to swing and miss an identical pitch there from Drew Gradwell. That one was out of the zone. Gets Valadez the chase for out number two. Yeah, Drew working his sinker slider combo kind of with that big bender from the side almost goes out of the left hander's box and hits the corner and then that sharp sinker it's tough to tough to deal with it really is it really is Kanoa Jandok steps in now for the aces looks at a couple of balls there it's now 2-0 that one just high there so it's now 3-0 and to Jandok and, and one of the things I've, I've said this multiple times in the past but I got to say, Kanoa Jandok might have one of the coolest names in the league. Yeah, most definitely. It's pretty awesome. Jandok, he was, uh, he was a rookie last season for this Aces squad, and I think actually everybody on the Aces last year were rookies, yep. aside from Aaron Schofield, who's played in the league, was previously on the Western Wolf Pack. And Moses Valdez had a stint two years ago with the Wolf Pack, but finally got picked up and had his official rookie year last year. Schofield made a couple calls, said, hey, I need, make, I need to get a couple players from overseas to get over here in the AWA, and that's exactly what he did. And the thing is, is that the Aces, they started off a lot hotter last year than everybody expected. They were a new expansion team last season. And so, you know, it, it, when, you, when you have a lot of guys on your team who, who don't have experience under the belt, their belt playing wiffle ball, it can be difficult because, you know, seeing this pitching for the first time in a season, it can be tough. So it, it'll be exciting this year to see this Aces squad. Everybody's got some experience under their belt now on this team. They returned all their guys. So it should be a fun year for them. Yeah, I know these guys like Moses. 2-2. Uh, I know these guys like Moises, Aaron, Morgan, and all of them. They play in another actual baseball league during the summer. So, I yep. mean, like you are saying right there, I mean, these guys had a little bit of adjustment last year. Yeah, one of the coolest things about Aaron Schofield, Moses Valadez, Morgan Granish, who's not here tonight, uh, those guys, they are just diehard baseball players. As that's popped up into the air, Jack Blayhouse makes the grab for out number three. But the Aces, they score three here in the bottom of the first, thanks to an Aaron Schofield three-run home run. Aces lead it three to one. We go to the top of the second. Chance Justice leads it off here. Top of the second inning for the Nighthawks. First pitch from Valdez is outside for ball one. And yeah, one thing we haven't talked about just yet is Chance Justice is coming off of a Tommy John surgery. He played through that whole playoffs last year with an injury. And, yeah. and even some of the regular season last season, he played through that injury. And that's a line shot out in the left center. Justice rounding first. He'll hold up there for a single. So yeah, lead off single here Chance for Justice. Right there, swinging that bat nice. Clearly not looking too hurt at all coming off an injury last year. Like I said, playing through it, looking completely healthy so far today. Yeah, it's definitely good to, to see Chance Justice out here. We didn't – Jack – you know, team captain Jack Blayhouse, he didn't even know if Justice was going to be able to play at all this season. We were, you know, having talks in the offseason about Chance potentially joining us in the commentator booth for most of the games this year. But glad to see he's able to play for the rest of this season. Yeah, he's definitely a force for this Nighthawks team. So that's definitely a welcome addition back this year. 0-2. Let's count to Jack Blayhouse. Nighthawks looking to get a couple of runs back here. I tie this ball game up. Is that one's outside. One and two. And, yeah, Jack Blayhouse, throughout his history in the AWA, he's got a couple of MVPs under his belt, but very well known for his high on base percentage and high batting average. Yeah, I was just about to say, he likes to put it on the ground and get the first, get on base. I think his home run numbers were a little down last year, but might have had a career year average on base percentage wise. So I mean, I think he'd trade that every day of the week for less home runs and more on base, especially when you guys got like when you guys got like Chance and Drew and Phillip producing the home runs for you. That's ripped over the head of Aaron Schofield. So that'll be a single for Jack Blayhouse. So it's back to back singles. Started off here in the top of the second inning for the Nighthawks. 
and they are in business now. Runners on first and second, nobody out with the rookie of the year from last season, Drew Gradwall, stepping up to the plate. This is great to see early on from both these teams. They're getting the bats going, very aggressive, not letting anything over the plate hit the zone, and just like that, wanting to swing, wanting to put the ball in play and make things happen. I think Drew wishes he would have had that one back. That was right down the middle. Valdez goes high there, so the count now moves to two and one here to Gradwall. Swing and a miss there, so the count now evens at two and two. And that's inside, so a full count now here to Gradwall. Great eye from Drew right there. That was just missed the inside corner. Ground ball over to Aaron Schofield, that third. Chance Justice kind of held up there. I don't know why. And I didn't see what the call on the field was. What you call, Jason? I called out. Call on the field is out. So Jack Blayhouse is out. We will review the play. See the replay on your screen. And I don't know, we're going to have to discuss this, so we'll be back momentarily. He sees, but can, yeah, I, I think so. If he touches it right there, he's, oh, but his, his foot lifted up. I don't know. He's going to tell us. What do, you, do you think he's got it? I what do. do you think? No, he because if Aaron's foot's on right there and his foot is up, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah I'm gonna see that. That's what Jackson said. The call on the field is confirmed. Jack Blayhouse is called out at second. Initially, he was safe, but as Aaron Schofield went to touch the bag again, Jack's foot came off the bag, so Blayhouse is called out. Runners at the corners. For the Nighthawks, one away, Philip Grossenbacher to the plate. Yeah, that's a tough play right there. Like you mentioned, Aaron had the runner right in front of him, but elected not to peg him out, went for the force out of second, and made it a little closer than it should have been. Yeah, and, and, and Blayhouse was originally thought to be to be safe there when we were doing the review, but his foot adjusted as Aaron Schofield went to go step on the bag, and ultimately that's why Blayhouse was called out there. Philip Grossenbacher strikes out for out number two. And now we're going to go to the top of the order with Chance Justice. Again, Nighthawk, Nighthawks are down two runs here at the top of the second inning. Trying to get at least one run in. Shorten this lead here in the end. Ground ball is foul on the third base side. Chance one for two, had that nice line drive right up the middle of his last at bat. He'll be looking to do the same thing with a runner on third here and two outs. Pitch on the way there, hits the zone 0-2. And, and, and we mentioned Chance's injury in his last at bat. And one, one thing that I, that I love about Chance Justice is this guy is never not working, not working hard. I mean, even with this injury, it's been a battle for him, but you know, we, we go to the same gym, and I see him at the gym all the time, still working out, still trying to get better. So there's a ground ball right over to Aaron Schofield. Throws on over to first, and it gets by Crowell out there. And so Grossenbacher comes around to score, and it's now 3-2. to two. Aces still lead it. Yeah, that was a nice hit. Very tough play for Schofield. He had a turn. It was a line drive and almost on his back foot like Derek Jeter-esque and just sailed that throw to the left a little bit. It's always, it's always tough making plays over that third. It's a long throw. That wiffle ball can spin all every which way when it's coming out to you. Aaron Schofield, one of the one of the best in the league over there, but even he makes errors from time to time. 2-0 here to Jack Blayhouse. Got runners in scoring position. Tying run on at third. And a go-ahead run on at second. This is, this is not the situation you want to be in if you're Moses Valadez. Again, Jack Blayhouse, one of the best in the league at getting on base. And that hits the zone. Two and one here to Blayhouse. 
that's low as well. So we're now moving to a three and a one count. Well, this is a bit of a predicament, like you were saying, Mark. Interested to see how Moises navigates this. Swing and a miss, and that was a big chase. Big thing for Valdez to get Blayhouse to chase there. It's now full. Round ball is fair, and Valdez gets the out on Gradwall coming home. <laughs> Call is out on the field. We will review it just because it is a scoring play. Valdez hit Gradwall on the back right there. And the call on the field is going to be confirmed. So Drew Gradwall tagged out heading home. But the Nighthawks, they score one run here in the top of the second inning. Aces still lead it 3-2 to two as we go to the bottom of the second. Moses Valadez stepping in, facing Drew Gradwall to start the bottom of the second. 0 for 1, got on base though with a walk against Drew earlier. One run leads by no means are safe in the AWA. And if you're the Aces, you're looking to just get at least maybe one, two runs here in this inning. Make it a little bit easier on yourself to close this game out. Two and one is the count to Valadez. Nobody on, nobody out here in the bottom of the second. It's low and in the dirt for ball three. Slider, ground ball over to Jack Blayhouse at third. And Justice made the catch originally, but dropped it. So Valadez will reach on an error. Yeah, it's tough. We, oh, man, it looked like he was holding that thing on for dear life, but just slipped out the last second. That was difficult because Jack Blayhouse has a good play by him, making the throw on over to first. It looked like the ball got smashed as it was thrown in the air somehow. Maybe Blayhouse might have held on to it too hard. Yeah. Justice ended up dropping it, so Valadez on at first. Ball one here to Kanoa Jandock. Looks at ball two, so it's now 2 0. On the slider, it's the outside part of the zone for strike one. That's tough. And the riser hits the inside part of the zone, so Gradwall working that zone, hitting the inside and the outside part of it. And that just misses low, so it's now a full count here to Jandok. Slider outside, Jandok does well to hold off. So the aces now have runners on a first and second, and up steps Aaron Schofield. Schofield with a three-run shot back in the first inning. Yeah, I had a flat as last at bat, just missed it. He'll be looking to recreate that three-run home run he had here. Put them up a nice five, uh, three runs, <laughs> four runs, excuse yeah. me. <laughs> it's hard to do math here sometimes, yeah, man, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Schofield gonna drive in a run, get, an ins get another insurance run for this Aces squad. And something that just popped into my head that I forgot about with Aaron Schofield here in the league is there was one year, two years ago, Aaron Schofield had an injury to his hand and he was still fighting through that and he would hit with only one hand. And he hit multiple home runs with only one hand in the league a couple years that ago. Now. Yeah, that was pretty impressive. He was up there swinging. And That's ripped high and deep off the foul pole. Aaron Schofield with his second three-run home run of the game. He's got all six RBIs for the Aces. The Aces now lead it 6-2 to two here in the bottom of the second. Give him that Dinger King helmet again.
man. Like I said, like you said, Mark, he's got all the runs today, and he's got all the hits right now for the Aces. That's only their second hit. Two hits, two home runs for the Aces today, both by Aaron Schofield. Pretty amazing. Unbelievable. Aaron Schofield, what a start to his 2024 season. Two home runs, six RBIs, and we're only in game one of this three-game series. Yeah, you can see that Drew just kind of left that uh, slider up in the middle of the zone, and Aaron didn't miss it again. It was all over that and just crushed it to the left field. Ball one here to Valadez, and that's outside as well for ball two. And we were talking earlier in the inning about the Aces trying to get at least one to two insurance runs. But hey, how about three more insurance runs here in the inning? Now lead it by four as Valadez works the walk there. And Drew's still looking for his first out of the inning. It's been a little bit of a tough going here for Gradwall so far in the bottom of the second. Aces have been getting to him. Gave up a three-run home run last inning, and now another three-run home run this inning. So Gradwall struggling just a little bit here in game one to start the 2024 season. Slider connects for a strike, so there's now a ball and a strike here to Jandok. Matt hits him on the back. One thing that's interesting that we were talking about last series was, you know, teams that have five players on their roster, not really getting as many at-bats. But now with the Aces only having three, they're just constantly going through the order. A lot of these guys are getting at-bats, and it seems like every single time they're just ready and they just get more opportunities to hit. And it's shown effective so far for this Aces squad. Yeah, definitely. You can tell Schofield is definitely hot. He's getting the battle on his hands and – doing a lot with his at bats same with Moses he's getting on a lot whether it's a walk or not so like you said more at bats more chances for hitting and getting in your groove now here he is Aaron Schofield two home runs six RBIs on the night facing Drew Gradwell again has had his number first pitch here from Gradwall is by Aaron Schofield for strike one that was that was a nasty nasty screwball Bradwall. That was very nasty. Well, we'll likely see. I thought maybe we would see Drew Gradwall being a little bit more careful careful here against Schofield, but going right after him right now is that's a ball. If I'm not mistaken, he's throwing three straight sinkers. No, no, no more of those sliders. And that's high. Ball two, two and two is the count here to Schofield. That's outside. Full count. Full count to Schofield, runner on first. Only one out in the inning. That's ripped high and deep. It's going to stay in the park. Grossenbacher is underneath it and makes the grab for out number two. Hey, Jack, the laptop just came off. We had a little technical difficulty there, but we're back. Moses Valid is stepping up to the play runner on first, two away. Two outs in the inning. Nighthawks trying to get that final out and just get back up to the plate and try to shorten this lead. Yeah, and Moses doesn't have a hit yet. Pretty rare because we know how good of a hitter Valdez is. Yeah, I was gonna say he doesn't have a hit, but he has been on three of his four at bats. So whether or not you're getting hit, still providing the base runner and providing those more RBIs for Aaron. That hit is coming. I can see it. 
He's been on all these pitches by Gradwall, and he looks at strike three right there. What a pitch from Drew Gradwall. That's out number three, but the Aces, they get three more runs here in the bottom of the second. Another Aaron Schofield three-run shot. The Aces, they lead at six to two as we go to the final inning here in game number one. Drew Gradwall step in. That's hit high up into the air. It's going to stay in the park. Noah Jandock was, is right underneath it. He bobbled it, but still makes the grab for out number one. So Kanoa Jandock made that look tougher than it needed to be, but regardless, gets the first out. Gotta love that. It's one of my favorite things about baseball. It doesn't matter how many times you bobble it. It doesn't matter if you hit a little bloops, blooper over the second baseman's head in the scorebook. It's going down as a straight exactly. up catch or a straight up hit, baby. Exactly. No one knows that he bobbled it two or three times. Do exactly. It doesn't matter. Exactly. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Philip Grossenbacher swinging a miss there. Start the at bat 0 1. And huge news for the Aces is a ground ball over to Aaron Schofield. He bobbles it. Throws on over to first, and Jandok just can't hold on. So Grossenbacher reaches over there on an error. So the Nighthawks, runner on first, Chance Justice will step up to the plate. But what I was mentioning there is with the Aces, Dylan Carroll just showed up. He's out there where they're playing second base. Wasn't able to hit this game due to stats reasons. That's a ground ball down the third base side. It'll be a ground rule double for Chance Justice. So. Justice, although he's been injured here early in the season, he is looking great at the plate. Has a couple of hits here tonight and is looking like he's just in mid-season form right now. Yeah, he's really starting to turn it on. Anything over the middle or inside the plate, he's just putting the barrel on it, turning it, and just driving everything to the left field. Jack Playhouse lines that one to Aaron Schofield. Grossenbacher was off the plate trying to go to – go home and then Aaron Schofield runs and tries to throw home to get Grossenbacher and he will score so the Nighthawks get a run in They're on the overthrow from Schofield so unfortunate there as a run comes in to score but regardless Ace is still getting out there so one away runner on third Drew Gradwall step up. Drew, one for three. Missed that pitch right there. You really wanted that one. Could have done some damage with it. This game is by no means over yet. Nighthawks just down three. A runner in scoring position here. And last year's rookie of the year to the plate is that is strike three to Drew Gradwall. And I, ha I had the outs wrong. That's going to be game. That's game. So the Aces, they lead it, or they win 6-3 to three here in game number one of the series. I apologize to everybody. Had the had the outs wrong there. But the Aces. Cra crazy plays going on here today in the game. I know. I know. We're just trying to get caught up here in the yeah, booth. Yeah. Aces, they win it. Game number one. Final score of 6-3. to three, And Aaron Schofield was absolutely the MVP of game number one. Had all six RBIs for the Aces, two three-run home runs. So what a job from Aaron Schofield and the Aces taking a one-game lead here against the Northern Nighthawks. We're going to get game number two started here very shortly. We will be back with you all momentarily.
And we're in between games here, games one and two in between. Uh, game one was just won by the Aces, final score six to three. Aaron Schofield had all six RBIs with two three-run home runs. We have him down with our own Robert on the field. We're gonna send it on over to him, interview Aaron Schofield. All right, Aaron, so six RBIs, couple home runs. What off-season training do you get to hit the bat so well in the first game of the season? Um, can't say I've touched a wiffle ball bat since uh, we lost the Nighthawks in the playoffs. Um, kind of went into a funk after that, I just stuck to baseball. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, f I felt good swinging today. I'm seeing the ball well. Uh, Drew Bradwell had my number last year, and maybe I have his this year. What is your expectation for game two? Uh, well, we're going to go with Dylan Carroll on the mound, and I'm hoping that he just fills it up. Uh, this team is going to swing, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping to get another win. We, we want to walk out with the series dub. Awesome. All right. Great batting for Aaron Schofield. Back into the booth. Thank you. Good stuff, man. Good luck. My, my favorite, my favorite part about that interview is is Aaron Schofield. He says, you know, Drew had my number last year. I might have it this year. And it was funny because Drew Gradwall was looking at Aaron Schofield when he said that. He just starts laughing on the mound. That was that was a pretty great moment right there. Gotta love the rivalries going on here. Every player likes to get after one another. You know, you had my number this season. I'm gonna get your number next season. All that kind of stuff always goes on. So, absolutely. And you know. What a game there from the Aces. Pretty exciting, and we mentioned how they didn't have a ton of experience on their team last year, but now they all have experience coming into this year. So this Aces team is going to be tough, and they're going to be one of the better teams in the league. I know that everybody has their opinions on who they think the best team is, but you have to absolutely put the Aces up there as one of the better squads, and absolutely offensively. I mean, this team can just get going. They, everybody one through five, one through four, one through six, whatever you want to yeah. say, they they all can hit, and so it's going to be interesting here. Drew Gradwell, he's going to remain on the mound for the Nighthawks. Yeah, and like you were saying, they don't even have Granite here, who's a big physical bat up there for them. Has hits yep. a lot of home runs. Started off slow last year. Was kind of getting used to the pitching here compared to baseball, like we were talking about earlier. But once he figured out, he definitely he's one of those guys where he can kind of just put the barrel on it, and it's going to go a long ways. You know what I mean? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and, and he was and, and Granite and Morgan Granite, you know, as you mentioned, he was one of those guys last year who just he was a, an incredible baseball player, but just hadn't really seen a whole lot of wiffle ball pitching, and so it took him a little bit a little while last year to kind of get into the groove of things. But like you said, once he did, he was hitting bombs. Yeah, and like we were saying, they put up six runs last game, and he's not even here, so that'll be a welcome addition. Ground ball right back to Drew Gradwell on the mound, throws on over to first, and Chance Justice just couldn't hold on to it there and we, we mentioned earlier about justice having his injuries he can only really catch with his off hand over there at first and so that's why you've seen him miss a couple of balls over at first he is injured but that was a great throw from drew gradwell would have had him had justice made the catch but yeah and he had not an easy play he's a lefty up there he had to do a whole 180 with his body pretty much and make a bullet right over there unbelievable play there by gradwell Fortunate Justice couldn't hold on, but regardless, still good play. 0-1 here to Moses Valadez. Ground ball right back to Drew Gradwell on the mound. He throws on over to first, and this is in time to get Valadez. So almost an identical type of play. Drew Gradwell makes that one, and Justice holds on. So one away here in the top of the first inning. Yeah, you got to wonder if Aaron took advantage of Chance over there, knowing he probably couldn't throw with his arm, and so just saying, hey, I've got the easy base out of third. There's going to be no play over here. So smart play by Sko over there to get over to third. Dylan Carroll to the plate. This is the first time we're going to see him in the 2024 20, season. And, I mean, Dylan Carroll was one of the most electric bats that we saw last year in the league. He had one series with six home runs in one series. It was unbelievable. It's something that I've really ha we don't see here a whole lot. Yeah, this is my first time seeing him in person, so heard a lot about him. I'm excited to see what he can bring to the table for this Aces team. Three and one is the count here to Carroll. Got a runner in scoring position. He's not going to have an opportunity to drive him in though, because he walks. Runners now at first and third. Kanoa Jandok, step in. Oh, I had a little bit of a rough first game here against Drew, but it's not easy going up against Drew as a lefty-lefty first game matchup, so we'll see if Kano can turn it around here in game two. Swing and a miss there from Jandok for strike one. And that is high, hits the zone. It looked like it was going high, but came back down at the zone, it seemed like. Strike three. 
three pitch strikeout that freezes Jandok. Just a tough sequence there. I mean, you got Canola swinging at a, uh, a slider that looked like it was probably coming right down the middle and faded off into the right hander's bash box, and then just sat there with those two just hard sinkers and couldn't do much with it. Runners will remain on first and third, and Aaron Schofield steps up. Aaron trying to stay hot here as two home runs in the series already at all six RBIs for the Aces in game number one. And that's fouled off there, one and one. And let me tell you, Sko is hunting that slider like no other. He sees that coming, he's all over it. Inside for ball two, and yeah, Aaron Schofield, I mean, it just comes up there every time, and he is hacking. It takes one of the, the hardest hacks I've seen in the league. It's pretty rare you can see a guy swing that hard and still keep his bat under control, you yep. know what I mean? Yep. A lot yep. of guys can just swing hard and be all over the place, but. Swing and a miss, that was a nasty drop. Pitch there from Drew Gradwall for out number three, so. No run score for the Aces here in the top of the first. We remain tied 0-0 zero to zero as we go to the bottom of the first inning. All right, Chance Justice is going to lead it off for us here in the bottom of the first inning. And Dylan Carroll on the mound for the Aces, so Valdez is going to get a game off here. Justice goes around. Ball and a strike to Justice. Ground ball is ripped fair. Foul. Foul down the third base side. It's our call. And the umpire out there. I, I, I love having umpire. I love having the umpire. It's great. It's not on us. So, Jason making the call over there. Foul ball. What change that? We're gonna look at the review here. We'll take. We'll take a. We'll take a look at it. We'll take a look at it. I. I thought. I thought it was fair. We'll take a quick look. So you'll see the replay on your screen here. So that. Yeah. We'll be back shortly, everybody. The call on the field is going to be reversed. Originally called a foul ball. It did get over the bag, so we're calling that fair. It's going to be a ground rule double for Chance Justice. Once again, Chance coming up clutch, just getting that bat on the barrel on the bat and providing some base running for this uh, Nighthawks team. And that's we're, we're thankful to replay, getting to use that here in the AWA. We just want to make sure that we're always getting the correct call on the field. And in this specific situation, that was an easy one for us to make, just given it was a ground rule double. 
back up to bat. First time facing Bill in this season. That's fouled off there from Blayhouse. So three and one. Jack Blayhouse. Love the green light on three and zero. Oh. And that is just outside. Ball four. So Jack Blayhouse works the walk. No. Nighthawks with runners on first and second. You know, like I was saying, this is my first time seeing Dylan. I don't know if he pitched last year, but I love seeing more lefty pitchers in this league. Yeah. I love seeing yeah. these lefty batters yeah. having to get a little taste of their own medicine, of these sliders coming in at them and having to fight it off and feel a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, and 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 Dylan Carroll, he he pitched a couple of games last season. He did get rough roughed up in a few outings, which is expected when you're newer in the league, especially pitching wise. And so. You know, we'll, we'll see what Dylan Carroll can bring this season. He's definitely got a lot of promise. I know that the I know that Aaron Schofield team captain is very excited about him. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if once Dylan starts playing more regularly. You know, you start meeting with the teams before the game. Jake likes to show people pitches for other teams, so I mean, you pick up a lot of stuff from other pitchers even. So he'll just grow from here, like we were talking about. That's ball four there to Drew Gradwell. So back-to-back -back walks for Dylan Carroll and the Aces bottom of the first. So bases are now loaded for the Nighthawks. Philip Grossenbach to the plate. Fouls that one off. Grossenbacher was a rookie last year in the league as well. And Grossenbacher hit some clutch hits in the playoffs last year, which really helped propel the Nighthawks to their World Series win. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, had a couple of walk-offs there in the postseason that were pretty huge for this yep. Nighthawks team. Yep, he did. Hitting in that four spot for the Nighthawks. I mean, you definitely get your opportunities, especially like what we're seeing right now. Bases loaded. Opportunity here for Grossenbach to drive in some runs. One and two is the count to Philip Grossenbacher. Round ball. It's foul down the third base side. Swing and a miss there from Grossenbacher, so he strikes out for out number one, one away. Nighthawks still in business here, though. Base is loaded, still only one out. Chance Justice to the plate, and Chance Justice has been all over the pitching here tonight. It's been red hot since his first at bat. It's absolutely lacing everything down that left field line. And Chance Justice is another guy that. I think is really gonna. He, he was a rookie last year in the re, in the league as well, and I just think he's gonna be another player who's just really gonna benefit seeing this pitching the second time around, his second year in the league, and he's showing that early. Like we were saying with the Aces, they have Schofield, Moses, Morgan, who are all really diehard baseball fans, and I consider Chance one of those guys also. Absolutely. I mean, he's coach. I think he coaches his high school baseball yep. team still. So. Yep. Love guys like that that just love and live and breathe baseball. Yeah, Ch Chance and I, we played high school baseball together and definitely one of the better baseball players I've ever played with. So He's going to really benefit this year, I think, his second year in the league. A run does come in on that bases loaded walk there to Justice, so he'll get credited with an RBI. Dylan Carroll starts Jack Blayhouse, Blayhouse off here with ball one and now ball two. 2-0. Two that's outside for ball three. Three balls, no strikes here to Blayhouse. Carroll just trying not to walk another run in as he's able to connect there for strike one. Yeah, that's that's the worst when you got the bases loaded and know where to put the uh, hitter and can't really find the zone. Outside for ball four, so that'll walk in another run. Nighthawks will extend their lead now, two to nothing. Drew Gradwall is going to have an opportunity here. We'll see if he can get a couple of pitches to hit. I know when you're a younger pitcher in the league, it can be hard from time to time to connect with that zone, which we're seeing that here with Dylan Carroll right now. But, you know, we'll see if he can kind of bounce back here and pitch himself out of this jam. Yeah, and almost, you know, I'm not the guy you really want to go to for pitching advice here. <laughs> me me neither. Me yeah. neither. <laughs> but, you know, maybe – Maybe he wants to try. Maybe just letting these guys get some contact on it. It's not very warm out here. Maybe he'll get some guys trying to muscle it. Ground ball up the middle to Aaron Schofield. He steps on second, throws to first, and gets him in time. So a double play by Aaron Schofield, and that was a huge play. The Aces needed it. Only had one out with the bases loaded, and Aaron Schofield 
comes out there, makes the double play. Unbelievable. The eight, the Nighthawks, they score two runs here in the bottom of the first inning. They lead it two to nothing as we go to the top of the second. Moses Valadez will lead it off here for us in the top of the second. Drew Gradwall pitches to him. Ground ball over to Grossenbacher at short. Throws on over to first, and it's in time to get Valadez for out number one. So a great play there by Philip Grossenbacher, who was playing pretty deep over that short. That was a hard throw to make, but Grossenbacher made it look easy. Great job. Dylan Carroll. Steps in and looks at ball one. Slider hits him for ball two. It's 2-0 two here to Carroll. Carroll definitely trying to get some runs here back. Get some runs back here in the top of the second as he fouls that one off. Two and one. Two and one here to Carroll. Nobody on one away. And that's low for ball three. Slider hits the zone. Full count now to Carroll. Popped up into the air in foul territory, and that's going to be out of Drew Gradwall's reach. So Dylan Carroll will get a new life here. Full count. Carroll walks, so he's over at first. Kanoa Jandok will step in. Set a ball in the dirt here from Gradwall. And that connects there from Gradwall. Strike one. One and one here to Jandok. That hits the zone. Nice pitch there. That's tough. That's really tough, man. Not much to do with that. Gets Jandok to chase for strike three. So now two outs in the top of the second inning. And this is the guy you want up when you're down two. Two outs here. You've got Skull, who had the two home runs in that first game, six RBIs, like we all know. One for two here in game two with a hard single. Did strike out his last at bat, but it's because he swings hard and he's looking for a good pitch. Something else, something else we got to mention is is – I don't want that double play to go unnoticed from last inning. I mean, that was unbelievable. The situation that the Aces were in, bases loaded, only one out. Could have been a six-run inning, potentially. So that's ground ball right back to Drew Gradwall, and Aaron Schofield will beat that out easily. Drew Gradwall is having a little bit of troubles trying to field that. Yeah, but like you are saying, not a lot of fielders in this league besides Schofield, Keaton McKay, you know, not too many would have that sense of urgency on a ground ball that, hey, man, I can get this guy out at second and still make the throw to first and get my pitcher out of this tough situation. Yep, and that was huge because it now the Aces, they're within striking distance. Just only, Nighthawks are only up two runs. And that was huge also for Dylan Carroll because don't have him throw more pitches than he needed to in that inning. Exactly, get him fatigued, kind of throw a lot of pitches like that and you're walking and runs it kind of just kills your morale you're like man I just got want to get out of here mm -hmm. and yep so to have your defense really help you out is it's huge that hits the zone for strike one so three and one count here to Valadez and that's outside for ball four but yeah and and, and regardless as well as you know it's hard to even make double plays in the ball so whenever one happens it's just like yeah, it's pretty impressive pretty a lot of times a lot of double plays that I've seen or that I think I've made one and it's been on a pop up where I caught it and the, the base runner just forgot that yep. there was yep. two or two outs or whatever. Or not that's probably out. the most common one exactly. that we see. So yeah. I, yeah, that's the only one that I'm familiar with. So to see the one where Schofield's actually on the run making a throw and 
skin to guys like yeah. they did old play. It's pretty impressive. Yep. First pitch here to Dylan Carroll is inside, and, and now we're going to see an opportunity here for Dylan Carroll getting to maybe drive in a couple of runs, get a couple of runs back. He was having some command issues there in the first, and now potential opportunity to get those runs back. Again, like I keep saying, the bases are loaded, nowhere to put him. Drew's got to pitch to him unless he wants to walk in a run. That hits the zone. That's a great pitch there from Grab Wall. Two and two now here to Carroll. Fouls that one off. Way to fight on that sinker. That thing was dropping at the last second, just fouling off, keeping us at bat alive. Slider is fouled back. Gradwell was trying to come on, but it was way out of his reach. Cal remain two and two. Now, those are some good pitches that Carroll's fighting off right here. Those are some really good ones from Drew Gradwell. Fouls that one off. So it's a good battle here from Dylan Carroll. Making grad wall work. Count will stay two and two. That's outside. So Dylan Carroll working a full count. Bases loaded, two outs in the inning. Aces down two. Slider hits the zone, and that was cold blooded from Drew Gradwall. Getting Dylan Carroll right there for out number three. No run score for the Aces here in the top of the second inning. The Nighthawks still lead it two to nothing as we go to the bottom of the second. Philip Grossenbacher up to the plate now for the Nighthawks. He looks at ball one here from Dylan Carroll. And, and that's been the story so far here tonight with Dylan Carroll and his pitching. He was struggling with command the last inning. Really got bailed out by Aaron Schofield's double play that he was able to make to end the first. So Carroll going to try to get that command under control and try to keep this just a two-run lead for the Nighthawks. Yeah, definitely. It would be huge if he could get this first out right here. I've always been a big uh, proponent of getting that first out. Just makes everyone feel a lot better about, hey, we're, we're just closer to getting this inning, not letting that first guy get on. Like, oh, goodness, what's going to happen now? So yep. That's high and inside to Grossenbacher. So the count runs full. 3-2 is the count. Nobody on. Outs in the inning. Pitch here from Carroll is high, so the walks are going to continue here in the second as Grossenbacher gets on to lead it off here. And now Chance Justice to the plate. First pitch hits him on the knee for ball. And that's outside for ball two. Swing and a miss. Strike one, two and one here to Justice. And that hits him for ball three. So, man issues just continue to be the problem right now. Let's see if Carroll can maybe battle back here. Try to get a chance to put this in play, and that's exactly what he does. Ground ball over Dylan Carroll, flips on over to first and gets chance Justice for out number one. So that's exactly what Dylan Carroll and the Aces needed. Yeah, got a nice little grounder there. Was able to field it cleanly with multiple wiffle balls in his hand and make the play at first. I know that's tough sometimes for some pitchers that like to hold a lot of the wiffle balls in their hands. Yeah, it's it's a difficult thing as a pitcher. You know, it's like you want to hold the ball so that you can have the speed of the game go faster. You can throw more pitches faster. But when you have to field it, it you pretty much have to just throw all the balls out of your hand. Exactly, <laughs> and then you don't know if one hits another one, and then you get all that kind of stuff going on. And so. sometimes you choose the wrong exactly. ball. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a difficult thing for sure. Causes sometimes some unneeded controversy. That's outside and low here to Blayhouse, so it's now a 2-0 count. And Blayhouse holds up there for ball three. 
No. Jason no. said he went no. 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 around over Wow, there. J Jason Morehouse, our umpire, said he went around, so that'll be strike one. He's standing the farthest away from the plate. <laughs> two, two, two balls and one strike is the count. <laughs> That's outside there to Blayhouse, so three and one. Inside ball four, so although there was a call saying that Blayhouse went around, wouldn't have mattered anyways because he walks. Yeah. Runners on first and second for the Nighthawks. Drew Gradwall is going to step in. Fortunately, the walks have continued for Dylan Carroll here in the second inning. Yep, he did walk. Ground ball right back to Carroll on the mound. He couldn't field it cleanly, and everybody is safe. And Chase, we were just talking about that. How if you decide to hold wiffle balls while you're pitching, you can have troubles fielding it, and that's exactly what happened to Dylan Carroll right there. Had too many balls in his hand and just couldn't. Yeah, you could even hear the wiffle ball it. hit the other wiffle ball from yep. up here in the booth. You could hear the contact yep. of plastic to plastic and just knocked it free when it could have had an easy second out there at third. So the bases are now loaded, only one out in the inning as that's fouled back there from Grossenbacher, strike one. And, and this is the exact situation that you don't want to be in whenever your base is loaded with only no outs or one out. Ground ball right over to Aaron Schofield. He throws on over to first, and he hit Grossenbacher before he touched first. So Aaron Schofield, for the second time now in two innings, has ended the inning with a double play. That's just insane. What are the chances of that? I saw that ground ball, and I was thinking I thought I had deja vu for a second, but holy, he just misses the throw there at first, but it still hits Phillip right before he touches the bag. Unbelievable. I have We're never seen. We're looking at the replay here. Anything like this, same situation as in the first inning. It was bases loaded, one out, and Aaron Schofield makes an identical play to end the inning with a double play now twice here in the first and second inning. Unbelievable job, Aaron Schofield, getting the aces out of tough situations, and now the aces are still within striking distance, only down two runs heading into the bottom of, or the top of the third inning, excuse me. That's just, uh, that's crazy. I can't believe that happened. Insane play by Sko once again. Unbelievable. Well, we're gonna head to the top of the third inning. Nighthawks, they lead it two to nothing, trying to shut the door here against the Aces. Good old Jandok leads it off. We're in the top of the third. And that, was, that was a tough pitch by Drew Gradwell. Wow. Yeah, Drew's been giving Kanoa fits all day up there at the plate. I mean, Kanoa just looks absolutely lost, I'm going to be honest. Love the guy, but he's having a tough time. He's had a couple of at bats now where he's just seen three pitches and he's out. Yeah, it's striking out with three pitches. And there's another one right there. Three pitch strikeout. Kanoa Jandok is. Struggling here against Drew Gradwell. Yeah, Drew Gradwell's got his number. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's just one of those days where you're trying to know what's coming, and it's just not even what you're thinking. So, Aaron Schofield's going to come up to the plate here, and 
I mean, it's just, it's incredible that the Aces are only down two runs. Aaron Schofield has been doing everything here tonight. I mean, he was the hero of game one, six RBIs, two three-run home runs, and now he's made a couple of double plays here in this game I to mean, keep this crucial double close. plays. Ground ball over to Jack Blayhouse at 30. Bobbles it, throws on over to first, and Chance Justice just couldn't hang on. That was a difficult one hop to try to field. So Aaron Schofield will reach on an error. Yeah. We see Chance trying to use two hands sometimes. And that looks a little painful, though. So tough play. Tough play. Now this gets interesting as Moses Valdez represents the tying run for the Aces. That's ripped high out to center. It's going to stay in the park. Chance Justice comes all the way over from first base to make the grab. So two outs now here in the top of the third inning. And the Aces now down to their final out. Still not out of it just yet, though, because Dylan Carroll represents a tying run. Knuckleball hits the zone. Unreal there from Drew Gradwall. That was gross. That was just. We don't see. We, I don't think I've ever seen Drew Gradwell throw knuckleball. That, no. was, that was a first for me. We're starting to see a lot of guys break it out this year. Jace did it on Monday. Not Drew on Wednesday. Trying to take a little page out of Jordan Rice's book. And everybody wants that famous Jordan Rice knuckleball. Swing and a miss there from Carroll. And it's a tough pitch to swing at. Full count. Hits the bat, so that's a foul ball. Count will remain full. And we've, we've seen that before here in the league. Oh, that's just got to be tough, man. That's low, and that was that was just low. I thought that was going to hit. But I think I saw a little sigh of relief there from Carroll as he looked down and saw, man, that didn't hit, thank goodness. That was, that was, that was too close for comfort there. But regardless, good eye from Dylan Carroll. Gets on, works a walk. Or is on first and second. And Kanoa Jandok's going to step in. So the tying run is now on at first. Kanoa Jandok has had some tough at-bats here tonight against Drew Gradwall. He's struck out on three pitches multiple times here tonight. So just going to try to keep this game going for the Aces. Do anything he can. Yeah, Holds Kano off there. Kanoa is 0 for 5 today through these two games with – Five strikeouts and two walks. Be huge for him to turn around right here with one swing of the bat. So 2-0 and here to Jandog. We're going to have a favorable count, and now he's looking at 3-0. and So this is huge. This is huge for the Aces. 3-0 here to Jandog. And that's low, so a four-pitch walk to Kanoa Jandog after his last time through the order, he struck out on three pitches. So now the Aces are truly in business. They bring the tying run over to second now and we're back to the top of the order with Aaron Schofield who's just been doing everything here tonight for the Aces yeah he had those two big swings that everyone knows about in that first game and has reached base three times here in game two been putting the ball been putting the barrel on the ball and we'll be looking to do that here first pitch here from Gradwell is low and in the dirt ball one Popped up into the air, and this is going to do it. Drew Gradwall makes the grab for out number three in the Northern Nighthawks. They take game number two, final score of two to nothing. That is the Nighthawks' first win of the season. Series is tied here one to one. We're going to go to the rubber match. Game number three, winner of that game, will take the series. So we're going to take a quick break here, get the lineups plugged in, and we will be back momentarily for game two. Number three. Content day. We're gonna get Jake's dirty hands once again. Oh. 
Jake literally just, just always kills me. Oh, he actually might be using substances. <laughs> That's a new team, right? Yeah. Are they? Where? Are we standing up here? Oh, oh, my bad. <laughs> so we're we're gonna get game number three started here shortly, but we're gonna send it down to Robert on the field, who's got Drew Gradwell the Nighthawks. Dude, tell us about the knuckleball. New pitches in your repertoire this year? Huh. You know, I'll, I'll mess around with it a little bit. Nothing I can throw really consistently, but uh, Dylan wanted to see one, so I gave him one and happened to hit the strike zone. So got lucky with that one, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. Might mess around with it a little more. Any other new stuff you're thinking about throwing out there throughout the season? No, really. Right now, early in the season, just, just trying to hit the strike zone, be more consistent. Still early, so a little more walks. Than I'd like in the first two games, but some stuff to work on. Uh, we'll see. We'll see when we get midway through if I uh, try something else. So, looking forward to. It. What do you expect in this last game? Uh, we'll see how Jack's looking on the mound. Um, throwing strikes are tough to come by, especially earlier in the season. So, and you know when you're got a pitch to Aaron Schofield and he's already putting up his whole season highlight reel against us right now, it's uh, also a tough task. So, we'll see. All right, good luck in game three. Back to the booth, guys. Getting game number three underway here between the Aces and the Nighthawks. Chance Justice leads it off, and Moses Valadez is back up on the bump. Ball one to Justice. Series is tied one to one. If you're just joining us, the Aces won at game one, final score six three, and the Nighthawks just won game two, final score of two to nothing. Chance was getting hot towards the end of game one and game two. Swing and a miss. Down goes Chance Justice for out number one. So one away, top of the first inning. Jack Blayhouse will be stepping in. And, and something that I haven't mentioned yet to here tonight, and I know that we're early in the season, but you, you'll be able to hear some some songs and, and, and some and an announcer talking up on the on the screen out here from if you're here at the game, essentially we're projecting walk-up songs, and then we also have um, the Mariners PA announcer. He did a bunch of recordings for us when we step up to the plate. So you'll be hearing that in the first innings of most of these games, which is why you might be hearing some music and things. Pretty awesome. Players first step up to the plate. Ground ball over to Valadez at on the mound and not going to have a play on Jack Blayhouse there. So Jack Blayhouse will reach. Now runner on first, one away in the top of the first. But yeah, just a, a nice experience for fans who are able to end up making it out to the game. And that was one thing that we didn't have last year was fans would come and they couldn't even hear me, hear us in the booth. And exactly. so it's nice to have something so people who come here can, can hear that. It's a great addition because so, sometimes you get some of the fans that really like to chat a little more than sometimes watch the game. So it's nice when a good player gets up or something, they're like, oh, okay, I can turn and watch this guy because yeah. they can hear it. So. Yep. It's all good too. We just we just appreciate everybody who shows up and watches. And I think all the, I think all of us players we love having our walk up songs. Makes us feel a little. Ooh. And that's rip past Kanoa Jandock at first. Jack Blayhouse round second and goes on over to third. So a hard hit single for Drew Gradwall. And there's now runners at the corners here for Philip Grossenbacher. That was a that was a hard hit single there for Drew Gradwall. I want to. I want to know what the exit velo was on that. That was a laser, right by Kanoa, right under that Milwaukee sign out there in right center. And there's a line drive ripped right to Kanoa Jandock. He's able to get the out on Drew Gradwall, heading on over to second. But Jack Blayhouse 
will come in to score. So the first run of game number three belongs to the Northern Nighthawks. They lead it one to nothing. Chance Justice back up to the plate and looks at a strike. That was tough. Looked like it would, might have hit his hands, but hit the zone. That one's outside. So a ball and a strike here to Chance Justice. Ground ball on over to Aaron Schofield at 30. Tries to flip to Carroll at second, but Carroll just wasn't over at second, and that goes on out of play. So Justice is going to be awarded second. And Grossenbacher is going to be awarded third. So a difficult situation as that should have been out number three. Schofield was looking to try to get the lead runner at second. Carroll just wasn't ready for the toss. And that and Eric Schofield had to go to first and gets on by Jandock at first. Difficult situation there for the yeah, Aces. That's, that's really tough. And then just that extra half second just lets all the runners get there. And you force a tough throw and they get an extra base because of it. So the Nighthawks now have runners here at second and third. Third, two outs in the inning, looking to add on to this one run lead. That's too far inside there to Blayhouse. So two and one. And that hits the top part of the zone. Another nasty pitch there for Valadez. Two and two. Inside for ball three. And Valadez is just paying that upper top right corner and just making it really uncomfortable for these right handed batters. Outside ball four. So Jack Blayhouse works a walk. Bases are loaded and Drew Gradwall is now going to step in. And That's a nice single right by Kanoa, his first at bat. Let's see, we'll, we'll see if the Aces can get out of this jam, but if they can't, we'll go back to that play between Aaron Schofield and Dylan Carroll trying to get that out at second. Making errors can definitely hurt you in this league. Foul off there from Gradwall, 0-1. Popped up into the air in foul territory. Valadez coming on, but just couldn't get there in time. That would have been quite the play if Valadez would have been able to get there. Yeah, he would have had to contort his body around that umbrella protecting the camera over there. That would have been some kind of parkour play. Yeah, the, the placement of that camera can be a little bit difficult, and I wouldn't be surprised if that thing got, got ran over at some point here in the season. It is decently out of the way, but like you said, a lot of that's just prime foul ball territory right there. Someone's going to go running into it, not looking. And exactly. Ground ball right back to Moses Valdez. as it gets underneath him, and Carroll's not going to have a play, so another run is going to come in for the Nighthawks. They now lead it 2 to nothing. Just an unfortunate situation there. Ground ball back to the pitcher is generally the number one play that you want to get, aside from a pop-up here in the league. If you're trying to make an out. Valdez just couldn't field that one cleanly, so a run comes in for the Nighthawks. Everybody's safe. Base is still loaded. Ground ball right back to Valadez, and he's going to tag Chance Justice for out number three. The Nighthawks, they score two runs here in the top of the first. They lead it two to nothing. Go to the bottom of the first here in game number three. Jack Blayhouse will be on the mound in game number three for the Nighthawks. And we're before we before we start this this half inning, we're gonna give a shout out to our umpire, Jason Morehouse. New addition to the league, Jason Morehouse will be umpiring a vast majority of our games this season, and we're very appreciative of it because up here in the booth, we normally have to call the game as well as be the umpires, which can be very difficult sometimes. And so takes a little bit of 
pressure off of us to get the right call all the time. And so we're very happy to have Jason Morales out here. So shout out to him. Yeah, he's great out there. You know, he likes to chirp at us a little bit sometimes. You know, and I, I know he's talking to you already up here. Oh, Mark saying he's ready for your game. So absolutely. I'm excited to be there for that. So this will, he's a great addition to the field and just kind of gives a little more life to the field and to this league. Yeah, that's my buddy there. So, you know, it's all good. I'm, I'm sure him and I are going to gonna be chirping all year long, but excited to have him here. Popped up into the air there by Aaron Schofield. Chance Justice right underneath it and makes the grab for out number one. So one away here in the bottom of the first inning. And Moses is going to come up to the plate now. Jack Blayhouse last season, you know, he, he had his struggles the start of the regular season when he was pitching. But Blayhouse is one of the huge reasons why the Nighthawks were even able to win a World Series last year. Jack Blayhouse had to pitch in some critical situations throughout the playoffs, and he was electric for the Nighthawks, and that's exactly what they needed because Drew Gradwell was their number one throughout last year, and Jack Blayhouse would come into situations being that number two guy now and just has been electric and been able to get the Nighthawks out of some tough and difficult situations and also help propel them to a World Series victory. Yeah, because for those first couple of years, I know when the Nighthawks won their first World Series, what was it, about two, three years ago or something like that, Yep. Jack was the ace of that team. Yep. And Trey was the yep. number two. So yep. it's kind of, I mean, that's the experience you want on a team. Your number two guy, he's been the lead guy before on a World Series team. So like you said, that was great to have for them in the postseason last year that Drew would shoulder the main games, and then you'd have a X star, X number one guy for X World Series team coming in as your number two. That's that's great to have. Exactly. And, yeah, it, it was a little bit surprising last year because Jack Blayhouse did come in as the, as the ace for the, for the Nighthawks, but Drew Gradwell just pitched so incredibly well. He did. He moved forward as being that ace on the Nighthawks squad, but by no means did Jack Blayhouse lose a step. I mean, he has that experience. He's won a World Series before in the past. Now he's got two under his belt, and yeah. although he's considered the, the two now, he's just going to continue to just be a dominant pitcher. Exactly. And I don't mean to bring up my team, but it kind of reminds me, it's kind of funny how both Gradwalls entered this league kind of as, like, expected to be the number two seeds. Josh on my team drew for this team. You know, Jay, we got Jake over there, and he was the expected number one guy. And just through the first couple of series, we realized, man, there's not Jake's not bad at all. By yeah. no means pitching. It's yeah. just Josh no, was no just means. had a little something yep. else that these guys couldn't hit. And, yep. and he's ended up being our ace. And it's great to have Jake come in as a number two and just focus on fielding. And Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and Chase, you make a great point. I mean, I can put, yeah, you know, Josh Gradwell became the one on the night on the enforcers and. Jake Oliver kind of took a step back and became the number two. And it's honestly an a testament as well to, to Jack Blayhaus and Jake Oliver just kind of realizing, hey, you know, yes, I used to be the ace on this squad, but just understanding, you know, where they are at right now in the rotation and just saying, hey, I'm going to take a step back here. I, you know, Josh Gradwell's dominating or Drew Gradwell's dominating. I'm going to let them, you know, kind of have their, their glory and their moments and, and be that ace on our teams. So and then you get those athletes like Jack and Jake in the, outf in the, in the field more, you know, yep. making some plays. I know. Absolutely. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we're not the best defensive team, so I just remember last year having Jake out on the field for two of those three games was like, this He's, is, now we've, we've yeah. gotten a guy who's going to be diving all over the place, making tough plays, and so it's just nice. It's really yep. nice. Yep, definitely. Bases are loaded here in the bottom of the first. Only one out in the inning, and now Jack Blayhouse is going to have to face Aaron Schofield here. Let's go just with, just missed a deep shot there to right field his last at bat. And that is ripped over the head of Grossenbacher at third. One run will come in to score, and everybody is going to hold up there. So an RBI single for Aaron Schofield as he just continues to add to his RBI total here in this series. He's got seven RBIs already in this series. It's unbelievable what he's doing here tonight. Yep, got all the runs so far through these three games for the Aces, and just staying hot. He crushed that ball, literally crushed it, so that's why it died so hard out there. And Nice RBI single. Moses Valdez looks at ball one, one and oh. And that's popped up into the air down the third base side just out of Grossenbacher's reach. So Valdez is going to get a new life. One and one is the count. That's outside for ball two. 
Two and one now here to Valadez. Bases loaded. Big swing and a miss there. And Valadez, definitely one of the better hitters on this Aces squad. Been a little bit quiet here tonight in the Aces opening series of the season. Definitely want to get him going, though. Full count. And that's outside for ball four. So Valadez walks and another run comes in for the Aces. It's now a tie ball game here at two to two. Valdez will be credited with the RBI. Dylan, er, All right, so we had a little bit of a lineup confusion. So Kanoa Jandok is going to be hitting third. Or going to be at the plate now. Yeah. Looks at ball one. We got it figured out here. Everything's all good. It's in the dirt ball two. It's 2-0 two oh here to Jandok. Bases loaded. One out in the inning. That is ripped oh. out to center, and that's gone. A grand slam <laughs> for Kanoa Jandok. And the Aces now take a 6-2 to two lead here in the bottom of the first. Unbelievable. Give Kanoa Jandok the Dinger King helmet. Oh, that was perfect. That was perfect right there. Congrats to Kanoa on his first home run of the season. That was wild. We were thinking, we were like, hey, is Kanoa up? Is Dylan Carroll up? And there Kanoa Jandok goes and hits a grand slam. So the Aces, they reach the six-run maximum limit here in the first. So the inning has ended. Aces, they lead it six to two as we go to the top of the second inning here in game number three. I 
Chance leads it off here in the top of the second inning as that's fouled off. Strike one. Chance got on with a walk here. First at bat against Moises. Ground ball right over to Aaron Schofield at 30. Bobbles it. Still has a chance to make the play, and the throw is offline. Over to Jandok at first, so Chance Justice. Give him a single on that. That was a, diff that was a difficult play. Yeah, that was a hard play. hit. Yeah. Sko wasn't an easy field ball. Busted his ass down, busted his butt down there, and base hit, baby. Base hit. Jack Playhouse to the plate, looks at a ball inside there from Valadez. That's ripped up the middle, Darren Carroll, and he throws on over to try to tag out Justice at first. But throw was offline, and thankfully it didn't go out of play because Justice would have been awarded another bag there. But Carroll making a great play. Yeah, he kind of he's that he's the lefty out there, kind of playing that short second, so he had to kind of turn his body that weird yep. way and just missed chance over that first. Ball one here to Drew Gradwall. That's ripped high and deep out to left center. It's got a chance, and it hits the top of the fence, but does not go over. Unbelievable. That is unbelievable. And wow. it, sometimes the ball falls your way, and clearly right there falls the ace's way. It hits the top of the piping, the yeah. yellow of the piping, and falls back into the field of play. So Drew Gradwall getting robbed by a home run from the fence. Yeah, that was a 102-foot single he just hit right there. So that's probably one of the longest singles you can hit on this field. Unfortunate situation, and we had Chance Justice out there at second asking us. He's like, well, hit the yellow. Shouldn't that be a home run here in the AWA? You have to hit it over the fence unless it's – yeah, you have to hit it over the fence. You can't – unless it's on the trees out there, you yeah. have to hit it over the fence in order for it to be a home run. If it hits the yellow and goes over, home run, hits the yellow, come back in, it's yep. whatever. Yeah, it's whatever it's it single, is. Double, single, double, wherever you advance to. Exactly. It's a strikeout there for Philip Grossenbacher, out number two here in the top of the second inning. Now we'll see if the Aces can take advantage of that. I mean, it should have been a potential two-run home run for Drew Gradwall and the Nighthawks. Now it's just runners on first and second, two away. Chance Justice here to the plate. Chance looks at strike one. It's a nice curveball right there from Valadez. Ground ball foul down the third base side. 0-2 now that count here to chance justice. Aces lead at 6-2 here in the top of the second inning. Winner of this game would win the series. And justice goes around there for out number Three, no run score for the Nighthawks here in the top of the second inning. Aces still lead it six to two. Dylan Carroll up for the Aces here in the bottom of the second inning. Big swing and a miss there for strike one. It's outside for a ball. Aces with a nice four-run lead here in the second. That's ripped on over to Drew Gradwall at second. Can't make the play on Dylan Carroll, and that's difficult for a lefty playing second base. Just an awkward throw you got to make to first. Yeah. Both lefties for both teams are playing that shortstop second base position, so anything up the middle, two first bases, going to be a little awkward for these guys. Yeah. Still almost had him. Still had a chance, oh, yeah. though, nonetheless. Yeah, definitely. But it's outside there to Aaron Schofield, ball one. 
Ground ball. Over to Grossenbacher at third, and that was a huge play from Grossenbacher because he had the momentum taking him to second <clears throat> and made the play get the force out on Dylan Carroll. So great play there from Grossenbacher. Had Gradwall fielded that, I don't know if they would have had the opportunity to get the out at second. Inside there to Valadez for ball one. That's high for ball two. So 2-0 two and oh here to Valadez. Hits the zone. Good pitch there from Jack Blayhouse. Looked like it was going to go a little high there, but came back down to earth and has <laughs> absolutely <laughs> destroyed that on the third base side. Thought that wiffle ball might break on impact of that tree. That was wild. That's just outside for ball three. So full count here to Valadez. Hits him for ball four. Runners now on first and second for the aces. Kanoa Jandock stepping up to the plate. Jandock with a grand slam in his last at bat for the aces. Inside, ball one. Big swing and a miss for strike one. And sometimes all it takes is that one hit, that one swing to just get your season going, you know what I mean? Yep, yep. Especially early in the season, you're just trying to get the cobwebs off, trying to, you know, you, you want to start off hot. Yeah. But sometimes it takes, guys, it takes guys a few games to get going. Yeah, and that was a, I mean, that's for your first hit, just an absolute beautiful shot, dead center. I mean, still going up as it's going over the fence. That was a great shot from Kanoa back there in the first inning. Jandok strikes out there for out number two. It's two away. Now on the bottom of the second inning, Dylan Carroll step in. Looks at ball one. That is ripped high and deep. It looks like it's going to stay in the park. Justice is right underneath it and makes the grab for out number two. Three. So no run score for the Aces here in the bottom of the second inning. The Aces lead at 6-2 to two as we go to the final inning here in Game 3. All right, we're here in the top of the third. Jack Blayhouse will start it off here for the Nighthawks. Aces trying to close this thing out and win this three-game series here against the Nighthawks. Yeah, definitely trying to close this game down. Had that huge six-run inning in the first. Been quiet in the second, just trying to close it out now. And on the, on the flip side of things, the Nighthawks... Trying to come back, come back from four-run deficit, and this is this is definitely something the Nighthawks have done many times in their history. So it's it's not out of the question by any means. Oh yeah. Three and one is the count to Playhouse. Ground ball right back to Valadez. He he bobbles it, throws on over to first, and Jandock just can't hang on. So Playhouse will reach here on the error. Uh, top of the third. Tough play for both of them. Moises, he dropped to his knees and tried to make a throw from his knees to first and couldn't get a clean throw to Canoa. It's fouled off there from Gradwall. Strike one. And this Nighthawks team, they got life right now. They got life. Exa did exactly what they needed to do. Got their leadoff runner on. Now 
you got Drew Gradwall up to the plate, rookie of the year just a season ago. Did a great job laying off that curve right there. Big swing and a miss for strike three. And Moses Valadez strikes out Drew Gradwall for out number one. So one away in the inning. That's some textbook pitching right there. You get ahead 0-2. Throw him a curveball in the dirt. He didn't swing at it, but then just gas him up with the high heat, and that pitch looked nice and juicy, I'm sure, to Drew. Philip Grossenbacher will step in, and, yeah, if you're Drew Gradwell, you're just trying to make something happen in that situation. You're down four runs. you got a runner on. Trying to do whatever you can to keep this game going. Great pitch there from Valadez. Hits the zone for strike one. And that's in there for... Strike two. You know, I, I don't want to jinx things here, but we've had one ground ball is fouled on the third base side. We've had one. I think we've had one speed check all year. Pitching has been right there all season. You're right. I, nice. I just kind of looked over, and, yeah, everyone's sitting just 59-60. No one really gassing up too much, so great to see that so far this, this early in the season. Yeah. It's been nice. 0-2 oh is the count to Grossenbacher. Nighthawks down four, trying to tie this thing up. Is that a ball there? Tad high for ball two. Count evens here at two and two. Ground ball right back to Valid as it gets past him on the mound. And Dylan Carroll, is it going to have an opportunity? Jack Playhouse takes advantage of the bobbled play there by Carroll. So Blayhouse goes second to third. Great heads up base running there from Jack Blayhouse. Yeah, he kind of took advantage of the kind of lax play at the end there by Dylan, who kind of thought the ball was just in there. And Jack said, all right, I'll take third then. Thank you. Take advantage of it. And that might be the momentum shift that the Nighthawks needed to try to tie this thing up. Chance Justice is on now with runners at the corners. 0-2 the count. Inside for a ball there. Swing and a miss there from Chance Justice, and that was a huge pitch there from Valadez. Strikes out Chance Justice for out number two. Two away now in the inning. Nighthawks down to their final out. Yeah, and you got to think Jack's doing anything he can here to get on base, keep that bat moving, keep it moving along to Drew and potentially one swing away from tying it up if he gets on. And this is the this is the perfect person to have up at the plate right now. Jack just consistently gets on base, whether it's via the walk or the base hit. Tough, tough guy to get out. Looks at that pitch high. So two balls, no strikes down to Blayhouse. That's outside for ball three. Outside ball four, so a four-pitch walk there to Jack Blayhouse. Bases are loaded for Drew Gradwall, and it's getting interesting now. Drew Gradwall represents the tying run here for the Nighthawks. Yeah, and before his last at-bat this inning where he struck out, he was three for three so far this game with three singles. So we'll see what Drew comes to bat here. Not to mention, Drew Gradwell just missed a home run earlier in the game. Hit it off the top of the piping, and it came back into the field of play. Popped up into the air, and this should do it. Kanoa Jandok is underneath it and can't make the grab. So a run is going to score, and this game continues. That is a tough air to make in that situation so the game's going to keep going bases are loaded and the aces are now going to try to have to get out number four yeah we're going to take a quick break in the action the score is six to three aces bases loaded two outs in the inning we have a little technical difficulty that we're going to take care of real quick so we will be back here shortly
We are back. Technical difficulty has been solved. Philip Grossenbacher with the play bases loaded. Fouls that one back. And so, you know, now with that error that Jandok made, not being able to catch that pop up, the tying runs on at first. Yeah, that's a huge, not too detrimental. Yeah, they're still up three runs. Yep. But it's just one of those things that compile and compile and just. A little too close for comfort, you could say. But we'll see what happens here. Valdez up 1-2 here against Grossenbacher and gets him to swing and miss for out number three. The Aces win game number three, final score 6-3, to three, and they take the series here against the Nighthawks. Congratulations to the Aces. The Nighthawks sent the Aces home last year in the playoffs, and so I know it feels, it's got to feel good for Aaron Schofield and this Aces squad to get a little bit of a payback here to start the 2024 season and win the series against the defending World Series champions, Northern Nighthawks. Yeah, just a little bit of payback. You know the Aces will want that World Series back more than ever. But, yeah, like you said, great start to the season. That's how they want to start it with a win over their so-called rivals from the other division. So great start to the season from both teams, and can't wait to keep, keep it going next week. That's going to do it for us here at AWA Field. We thank everybody for joining in here tonight. Aces, they win the series two games to one against the Northern Nighthawks. Thank you, everybody, so much. Uh, we will be back next week with more Wiffle Ball action.